Good evening, everyone. Uh, today, fourth lessons. Actually, I'll, uh, previous week, I talked about karma. What is karma? So today, I'm going to talk about uh, the reset of karma. The reset of karma. The rebirth is one of them. The rebirth is the, the, res, the reset of our karma. So we were born in this life because of our past karma. If you stay, continue to create either good or bad karma based on craving for existence, then you will stay every rebirth. You will stay every rebirth after life. So that is the, the reset of karma. So actually, I uh, discussed with the sister Lu On. So actually, uh, to cover the whole topic of the reset of karma, then I requested for one more week. So I went to extend one more week. So uh, this week, so today I will talk about the reset of karma. The next week, uh, I will talk about rebirth because uh, rebirth is interesting because the, so we need to, we, we have a many things to discuss about rebirth. And also people may want to know. Um, so therefore, so today is not the last lessons. So there will be another one more week if you are interested. <clears throat> Okay, today, so I'll talk about the reset of karma. So the reset of karma is mentioned um, in many places, especially Chula Karma Vipanga Sota from Majjama Nikaya, Sota number one, three, five, Chula Karma. Actually, they are the Kama Vipanga, Kama Vipanga. Vipanga means analysis. So, so in this order, the Bora analyze about camp, especially the reset of camp. The reset of camp. So, Chula is a uh, smaller discourse, smaller discourse. And also, we also have another Kama Vipanga, so that is called. Maha Karma Vipanka so the greater discourse on analysis of karma. Also, the Buddha discusses about uh, how karma work. So those who want to know, and you can read Majma Nikaya, Sura number 135, and also Sura number 136. So because of time constraint, I will not be discussing in details. So in that soda, when a young man called Suba asks why people are short-lived, some people are short-lived, some people are long-lived, some die in their early, early age, some live until 90 years old, even 100 years old. And some are ugly, some are beautiful, some are poor, and some are rich. So the Buddha gave um, uh, all the answers in that sort. So here, when the Buddha, want, when the Buddha is um, answering the question, it is referring to past karma, the karma in our past life, in our past life. So in that sort of the Buddha said that some, some people are short-lived because they are the one, they are all, uh, they, they accumulate, uh, they, they, uh, they are the one who kill, who commit killing, who commit killing because of that. So they die in their early age, in their early age. And some people are long-lived because they try, uh, uh, they refrain from killing. And also they, 
they have a compassion and loving kindness to all sentient beings. So they will refrain from any type of killing. So therefore, in this life, so they live longer lifespan, longer lifespan. So here, actually, here it's important to know that the Buddha talk about only the present conditions, present cause and conditions, not in this life. Some people um, they accumulated uh, good karma to live longer lifespan, but they do not take care of their their health. They will eat whatever they like and they do not do any exercise. So therefore they have a lot of diseases. So this is a present karma. Present karma. So therefore it is combination of um, past karma and present karma. So we don't have to forget about present karma as well. So here in this order, the Buddha just uh, referred to past karma. Some are, some are sickly. Some people have a lot of sickness and illness a lot of diseases because the Buddha said that um, they injure other living beings. They used to harm other living beings. So because of that, uh, in this life, they have a lot of diseases. And some are healthy, some are healthy. The Buddha said that. So those people do not injure other living beings. Even they uh, they protect, they protect living beings. So therefore, uh, they are healthy. So that is the past karma, past karma. Some people were born, you know, they are, they are a lot of sicknesses, a lot of diseases. They were born with the diseases. Some people very fit, very healthy. So no need to go to hospitals or clinic. So because they do not injure other living beings. Some people are ugly. The Buddha said because they used to be angry in their past life. A lot of anger, a lot of resentment, a lot of irritation. So therefore they are ugly. Some are beautiful, opposite. No anger, no resentment. They, they used to have a beautiful mind, sympathy, compassion, loving kindness. So therefore, they are beautiful in this life. <clears throat> so we cannot change our appearance. But because of our past, we have this appearance because of our past time. So what we can do is, of course, we can change by using our present time. So therefore, some people can undergo, you know, blessed, blessed surgery. So they become beautiful and handsome. By using present time, you can, you can change this one. So that is me, even though you were so as an ugly, ugly man, an ugly woman, you can stick and change it. But if you don't want to undergo blessed surgery, then what we what you can do is do not try and try not to be angry. Try not to have any resentment in your mind and try to smile. Try to stay with compassion, sympathy, empathy loving kindness, then even though you are ugly in terms of appearance, people will see you as a beautiful and lovely man or woman. That is, we can change our appearance, even though we cannot change our appearance. If we do not undergo blessed surgery. So therefore, uh, the Buddha just referred to Best karma. Some people are poor, some people are rich. So the Buddha said that some people are poor because they used to give in their past life. They are generous. They used to share what they have. 
So some people are rich because they uh, practice generosity and also they used to give. Some people are poor, but they do not give, they do not share uh, virtual people. And some are the Buddha said, uh, some are wise, some are stupid, some are foolish. So the Buddha said that some are wise in this life because they used to learn, and they used to discuss. They were they, they, they approach the wise people and they, they ask questions, they discuss with them, they listen to what they say. So today uh, you are accumulating a uh, good karma uh, that makes you wise, even in this life, and also after life as well, after life as well. Some are foolish or some are stupid because they never listen to Dhamma talk. They never uh, engage in discussion. They never ask question. So that means they never learn. So in this life, you listen to Dhamma talk and you discuss about the Dharma, and you ask the question, and you read the book, you listen to the Dharma talk, then even in, in this life, you will become a wise person, wise person. And you will become a wise person in after life, this life, sub subsequent life. So actually the Bora gave uh, the answer, of some people are short-lived, some are long-lived, some are wise, some are foolish, some are ugly, some are beautiful. So actually, uh, I will not be discussing in details because I think it's good to go and read. Because this is a <clears throat> general des description about gang. So normally we always say that if you do good things, you have a good result. If you are doing bad things, you have a bad result. So this is a general teachings of the camp. But today, today, I will discuss important point about the result of camp. So as a Buddhist, uh, we have a, um, misinterpretation or mis misunderstanding about the, the reset of okay. So today I want to discuss about them. In Chula Kama Vipanka Sota, the Buddha said that beings are owner of their own camp. Beings are owner of their own camp. And heir of their karma. They have gammas at their origins. Uh, gamma as their relatives, gamma as their result. It is gamma that distinguish beings as superior and inferior. So some are inferior, some are superior in terms of appearance, in terms of property, in terms of status, etc. So, so the um, some people are rich, some are poor, some are famous, some are not. Some are good looking, some are bad looking, because of their kind. So their action will distinguish. Uh, so whether they are inferior or superior. So therefore. So the Buddha talk about importance of uh, ownership for camp. So therefore, we always say that um, if you do good, you have a good reset. If you do bad, you, are, you, you have a bad reset. So this is a 
general teaching of the Rasa Toka. So therefore in Tamapara, the Buddha said that Do Mehi Kechan Atapan. You you are say should make the effort. You have to do yourself. The Buddha is not a savior. The Buddha is not a creator. The Buddha said that, that the targeters are the ones who only show the way. So here, the target here is the Buddhas. So the Buddhas are the ones who only show the way. So this is important teaching in Buddhism. Buddhism is not a, uh, the teaching uh, that will promise if you believe in Buddhism, you will go to heaven. No, not in such hope. The Buddha cannot make you go to heaven or the Buddha cannot make you go to hell. You will say that the owner of your camel. You do good, you have a good result. You do bad, you will have a bad result. So uh, therefore, do it yourself. The Buddha is not a savior. The Buddha is not a savior. So the Buddha just show the way. These are Ahusa actions. Don't do that. These are Ahusa actions. Good deed. Do that. So this is a the Buddha just show the way. Killing is not good. Harming is not good. Don't do that. Refraining from killing, harming. Good. Then having compassion and sympathy to living beings, good. So the Buddha just showed the way. So we have to make our own effect. So we are on our, our own camp. So therefore, so one of the, uh, the difference between Buddhism and other main religion is Buddhism is not a savior. So the Buddha did not promise. If you believe him, he will rescue, he will give you a celebration. No, the Buddha didn't say that. You have to make your own celebration. If you want to go to heaven, just do good deed. If you want to if you are doing a whole deed or party, you will go to a whole destinations. If you want to attain Nibbana, if you want to attain enlightenment, <clears throat> you have to meditate and you have to do your own meditation. The Buddha cannot do for you. So therefore, this is a one uh, important teachings about karma. karma. Okay, any question up to now? If you have a question, then you can answer. No question. Okay, let's continue. So now I will talk about the important aspect of the law of karma, the law of karma. But this one also from Tamapata, from Tamapra. The law of karma. The Buddha said that even an evil person may still find happiness so long as his evil deed does not bear fruit. So here the Buddha said that an evil person, some, uh, one person who is killing, engaging a lot of killing. He still have a happiness. If he had, things seem to be good. So there's no evil consequences. That there is one person who is doing business uh, by uh, by 
Kasivin Akapipe by uh, stealing, uh, by exploiting, seem to be okay, then as long as uh, the Buddha said that but when his evil did does bear fruit, he will meet evil consequences. Even though he is doing killing, harming living beings, even though he is engaging uh, a wholesome business, even though he is committing sexual misconduct, even though he, uh, he is deceiving, telling a lie, even though he is uh, uh, doing different type of unwholesome actions, his life seemed to be okay, very, very happy. But when his evil did just bear fruit, he will meet evil consequences. So therefore, this is a, the law of calm, the law of calm. Sometimes you will see that some people who are killing, who are fighting, creating uh, war, seem to be okay. But the result of evil action will come, and he will suffer. He will suffer. So there is a uh, the law of karma. The another one is opposite one. Some people are doing good, but there is no good result at all. His action. He will experience, uh, he will suffer, but so there will be the time his good deed will bear fruit. So here the Buddha said that. Even a good person may stay meet with the suffering, so long as his good deed does not bear fruit. So that the law can sometimes it happens. Even though you're a good person, but you have a lot of difficulties, a lot of problems in your life. But your good deed will bear fruit, then you will. Uh, you will benefit from it. The Buddha said, when it does bear fruit, he will enjoy the benefit of his good deed. Even though you are doing good deed, even though you are doing good things, if you experience problems, difficulties in your life, don't give birth, your good deed will bear fruit. So in those times, you will enjoy. So the thing is, the most important thing is doing good deed. Good deed will bring the good reset talker. But it will bring the bad reset talker. So that is the law of karma. But one thing we need to keep in, in our mind, that's very important one, it's very important one, so when we talk about the result of karma, it is complex. It is complex, intricate. As I earlier said that, as the Buddha said that, even though some people are doing unwholesome uh, actions, akusala karma, they stay enjoying life. They have a lot of happiness, property, nobody is blaming them. But when his house and deed bear fruit, he will suffer, he will suffer. So that is the result of karma. But uh, the Buddha said that, so the result of karma is so complex so complex. The same two people are doing the same good deed, 
the same quotient. So two people are doing meditation. The same meditation teachers and the same meditation teachers and under the, uh, the same meditation retreat. One person has a deeper level of concentration and the, the other person no, struggling. Even though they are making the same effect, but different. So they are disposition. So different level of their person come. So therefore, so the result of karma is so complex. So the Buddha say, the Buddha mentioned, so the result, the result of karma as a one of the four inconceivable matters in Asintia Soka. Asintia Soka. So the Buddha said that, uh, so four things are difficult to know. Actually, it is a complex. So uh, shouldn't think, shouldn't think it doesn't mean you shouldn't think. You can think. So number one, the domain of the borders, the domain of the borders, then the border can do. It is, you cannot imagine, you cannot think in your heart, with your mind. Because the Buddha can do a lot, the Buddhas can do a lot. And also the domain of the one in jhana. In jhana here is uh, in the deeper level of concentration. So when somebody is in jhana, he can sit down the whole day without eating, without drinking. He can sit down for seven days, seven days, without eating, without drinking. He is not tiring, peaceful and tranquil. So therefore, when you look at somebody is sitting down for seven days, without eating, without drinking, you will see that not impossible, not impossible. So therefore, uh, the domain of the one in China is a, uh, so complex. Also, you, we, we cannot imagine with the one, with the one normal mind. And also another one is the result of karma. So normally the general law of karma, general theory of karma is you do good, you have a good result. You do bad, you have a parent set. But we cannot say for sure. We cannot say for sure. So therefore, in the Pali Canon, the Pali Canon, the Buddha normally use the word Samotanika, Samotanika. If you care, you might go to hell you might go to hell. So the Buddha say, you must go to hell. No, the Buddha do not say, you must go to hell. So the Buddha use the word Samvatanika. Samvatanika is, uh, if you care, it will, uh, you will accumulate a reset that, might, that you might go to hell. But that is not a uh, definite, uh, so we can look at the story of Venerable Ingoli Malati. Even though he came, but he does not go, didn't go to hell. <clears throat> he didn't go to hell. So that, so that me, uh, two people, one K sentient beings. Sorry, uh, two people case in the MPs. One person will go to hell, another person may not, may not go. So therefore, we shouldn't we shouldn't think. Um, I would say definitely. 
So therefore, the Bora Yuta wa somewhat unique. So the Rosetta Kama is so complex. It's very difficult to tell. So therefore, in many sotas, uh, the Buddha talk about the complex nature of the Rosetta Wakam. So we have to look at many dimensions, many dimensions. Normally we, we say that if you do good, you will have a good reset. It's not 100% correct. You do bad you will have a bad reset. It's not 100% correct. So we can refer to the same story of Venerable Angulim Malatir. Even though he commit uh, killing of many, many human beings, but he attained enlightenment. He became an Arahant. So therefore, uh, to know about complex, complex nature of the receptor camera, the receptor camera. So here is Dhamma we park. We park. Normally we say gamma, gamma, gamma. It also means gamma and it reset. So it's very complicated. So therefore we need to look at from different dimensions. So now I will discuss a uh, different aspect of the Rosetta Kama using some sotas, what the Buddha taught. So one of the sota is, uh, we call it uh, Lorna Fala Sota, Lorna Fala Sota. In English, it is called a lamp of salt, a lamp of salt. So there is a lamp of salt in your hand, there is a glass of water. If you put a lamp of salt into the glass of water, you cannot drink. It will be very salty, very salty. So here, water represents Hosankam, Kusalakam. Salt represents Ahosankam, Ahosankam. Some people have a little bit of Hosanka. Hosanka. But when they do a Hosanka, lamp of salt, then they, 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 they suffer. They have a lot of problems. They have a lot of suffering in their life, difficulty in their life. But even they will go to unhappy destinations. Just like a hair, anime ram, and beta rams. So similarly, uh, so there is a water, you need water in the river. There is a, a lamp of salt, the same amount of salt. But when you put it into the river, it will not make any difference. The same amount of salt, the same amount of Ahosanka. So, therefore, uh, to pass in, commit stealing. To pass in, steal the property of the government. One passing, go to jail. Another passing, no. <laughs> So in a different level of their also, you know, uh, different level, uh, different background, different background. Similarly, um, some people, even though they do a house and camera, so that the result of that house and camera cannot give so much effect in their life. Of course, there is a result of camera. Not serious, not serious. Because they have a lot of wholesome deed, a lot of wholesome actions. So therefore, in this soda, the Buddha said that two people may commit the same 
particularly your arms and camera. While I'm passing, go to a happy destination. Another person went off, but he still suffer a little bit of the result of that arms and karma in this life. Then those arms and karma will not follow in this life. So here, when you look at this so that so we can make a conclusion that trying to have more good deed. If you have a more good deed, sometimes you may do our sang karma. That our sang karma will not make a bit different in your in your life. In your life. That is because of having a lot of a lot of good karma in your life. So that is the important teachings in Buddhism. So therefore, after you have done, if you have done aus and karma, don't feel depressed. Don't do it again. But try to do more good deed, more good deed. So in that way, you can influence your past time. Your past time. And also in this soda, the Buddha talk about another important aspect of the reset of camp. Many, many bodies said that if you kill, if you kill living being, you will be killed. So that is a, uh, it's not 100% correct. Not one of them correct. If you kill, you'll be killed, of course. So there are the sun, uh, how do you say, there's a possibility, possibility. Suppose you kill one person, you are likely to kill by their relative, their relative. But according to this soda, the Buddha said that, we cannot take it differently. So what the Buddha say is, if you do animals and karma, just like a killing, stealing, so it is unpleasant, painful. So you will experience unpleasant resent, and painful resent. It may not be the same, may not be the same. You kill, you may not be killed. Uh, you may go to jail, then you will experience unpleasant, uh, you will enter co unpleasant experience in your life, like that. So that is the, what the Buddha taught in this soda. So normally, um, we Buddhists think that if you, if you care, you will be care. It's not one to person correct. The Buddha said that you do also actions. So you will not experience the same one. You may not, you may not. You may experience the same, same one, but you may not. So the thing is, after doing a whole sun karma, so you will experience unpleasant, unpleasant things in your, in your life. So that is the important, uh, important theory of the result of karma. Any question? No question. Huh? Okay. Then I will discuss another one that is also important for Buddhists, also non Buddhists. It's called determinism. Determinism. Determinism in Pali is uh, Niyata Bara. It is the belief that an individual's destiny is fixed, that he or she cannot change it. And he or she must act according, accordingly, accordingly. That's called determinism. So that means you are destined to uh, live longer lifespan. 
long lived. You cannot change it. You have to act accordingly. Then you, you think that you will be short lived, and you will be uh, unlucky. So you will experience uh, certain kinds of uh, certain kinds of diseases. It is determined. So you cannot change it. You cannot change it. So that means, so this, this is a one of the wrong view, one of the wrong view. And the Buddha talk about two types of determinism. Two types of determinism. So I think if we learn and you will know what the Buddha wants to say. So number one, we call it uh, Gamet determinism, Gamet determinism. In other words, we can call it fatalism, fatalism. If you think, actually this is the wrong view, this is the wrong view. Everything we experience in this life, pleasant, unpleasant or neutral is due to our past karma only, due to our past karma only. So now you have a pleasant experience, pleasant light, pleasant people. So now you have a unpleasant experience in your life. You're meeting with unpleasant people. You're dealing with unpleasant problems. So you think that if you think, if you think it is just due to the past time, due to the past time only. If you think so, that will be wrong view. That will be wrong view. So that means, of course, many of our past, our, our pleasant and unpleasant experience, maybe because of past karma, but not just past karma alone. Not just past karma alone. So as I earlier said that in my previous lessons, two types of karma, past karma and present karma. You are experiencing pleasant things in your life, unpleasant things in your life, or neutral things in your life. So they are not, not just because of past karma. And also it can be because of present karma as well. So then only it will be like you. So normally we Buddhists think that, we Buddhists think that, oh, what can I do? This is my past karma. <laughs> what can I do? This is my past karma. I have to accept it. Like that. Normally, when you suffer from some diseases, like a cancer, if you think that it is because of my past karma in past life, that is wrong view. It may be right because of past karma, but it is also uh, the present karma also play an important role. Present karma also play an important role. The lifestyle, the diet, maybe the cause of cancer. So therefore, uh, Commit determinism or fatalism. If you think that you are best, uh, you, are, you cannot change your, your camp. That is wrong view, that's wrong view. So we experience pleasant, unpleasant, neutral, the result of karma in this life. It is not just because of past karma. 
in the press line. It also due to our present camera as well. Then only it will be a real view. Normally, if you say that it happened because of my best camera, best life, that's not 100% correct. It may lead to raw understanding. What can I do? That's my best scan. Then you do not do anything. So it will lead to an, anti an antipathy. No antipathy, no action. You just, uh, uh, you just blame your best scan. So that is also one of the wrong view. Another one is uh, another one of uh, determinism is these day determinism. These day determinism. In Pali, we call it Aksara Nemana Hitu. Aksara Nemana Hitu. So, really, they are, so they are, God knows and control everything, and therefore has determined everything before it has happened. You become rich because God wants you to be rich. You become poor, then you see that God make you in that way. So you have sickness, you have any, any type of pleasant or unpleasant things in your life, you attribute to the God. Because of God, it has been. So if you have such type of determinism, that is also wrong view. So such a wrong view will lead to a responsibility. Don't feel me, it is the will of God. It is the will of God. So this is also determinism. Not only uh, God religions, even in our Buddhism also. So there are some people who believe certain kinds of God and goddesses. Things happen in your life, good things or bad things happen in your life because of God or goddesses. That's also wrong view, wrong view. So unpleasant things, arises in your life because of you are that kind. Unpleasant things arises in your life because of your kind. So if you believe uh, things happen because of uh, God, God or goddesses, that's also a type of this day determinism. So the Buddha said that we are on our own kind. We are creator of our own kind. If you want to have a, a good life, you can create your own. So that is a, the nature of the reset of time. Another one is, another uh, one of the wrong view is the non-causality, non-causality, ahetu, apachaya. If you think that everything happens without any cause and conditions. So that is also wrong view. If you think that things have been in your life without any reason, without any conditions, that's also wrong view. Of course, as a Buddhist, we don't have this uh, like this one because see, we believe uh, causality, theory of karma. Because of cause and effect, uh, things happen in our life. Actually, there are some people who believe that we are here and without any, uh, we are here by chance. We are here in, uh, as a human being by chance. We die, finish. So they do not believe uh, cause and conditions. So, so their belief also 
wrong you. We call it non causality. Non causality. So I think I see uh, when you want to know about the resetor camera. So we have to be very careful about three type of wrong view. Number one, if you say things happen in my life because of past camp. So actually, it's not 100% correct. So that means things happen in your life, whether pleasant or unpleasant or neutral, not just because of past camp, and also present karma. Present karma also plays an important role. And second one is, if you believe, uh, I want to say that God or goddesses, so they create your pleasant and pleasant experience in your life. That is also wrong view. So the last one is non-causality. So in terms of any causing effect, causing conditions. But I think that um, uh, it is important to know, uh, as you see, when we talk about the reset of camera, then uh, we need to keep three types of wrong view in take time yet in the In Kautra Nikaya, chapter three, Sutra number 61. Okay, any question? No question. Okay. Then to talk about the reset of karma, I also want to cover important uh, practice. You now the important practice according to Buddhism. Also, it is a one of the wrong practice, one of the wrong practice. Of course, uh, Buddhism also believe the purity, purity of the mind. And also uh, in other religions also, they believe the purity of purity from sin. So by doing something, so they believe that they were purifying their sin like that. So here yeah, I want to uh, Oh, one of the Sota, Sankarava Sota. So in this Sota, uh, the Buddha asked Sankarava Brahmin, Sankarava Brahmin, who believes in purification by water, purification by water, and he always immerses himself in water at task and at dawn, two times a day. In the evening, he will go to the river and type into the river. He think that all his sins and holes and deep are purified by just diving into the water. And he believed that water can cl cleanse him all his evil deed. And the water asks, Considering what benefit do you do this, Brahmin? Because he used to go to river and immerse himself in water. Try city, try city. At dusk and at dawn. What benefit do you have? The Brahmin said that here, Master Gautama, wherever Ibedi I have done, during the day, I wash away by bathing at desk. The whole day I will have a and can even did. But when I go and immerse myself in the water, all my ebedi are purified. And Wherever EBT I have done at night, I wash away by bathing at dawn. 
So night time, I may have ten hours in camp. Then I go to the river and immerse in the water. So in that way, my epity is purified. So actually, um, most of the religions, most of the religions, they use water. They use water as a rice and waitress. As a rice and waitress. So you can look at Christianity, you can look at Hinduism, you can look at Islam, you can look at Buddhism, even Buddhism. We also use water to bless, you know, to bless. So that is also, uh, if we look at the purpose of doing uh, using water, it's very important. Even nowadays in Hinduism, uh, if you go to the river, if you dive into the water, then they state in that all their sins are purified. So therefore, uh, so this tradition, this practice, stay followed by Hindus now, even nowadays, even nowadays. So they will go to river early in the morning and they will dive into the river and they believe that for all their hours and deed, accumulate at night time or wash away. They will go to evening. Some people may go to three times a day. So by doing so, they think that all their liberty are purified. So in, uh, you know that in Christianity also they use water. So they baptize. Um, so using water is important, uh, honestly, I think uh, important signature of most of the religions, most of the religions. So here in, um, so there's a story uh, of a Brahmin, and this is a slave from uh, Anatta Pendika, Anatta Pendika, the one who donated Jedavana monasteries. So she is slave in his house. So she had to get up early in the morning, so early. And she normally bring the clothes and she wash those clothes in the Ganji River, in the Ganji River. Early in the morning, she saw that a Brahmi is diving in the water. Early in the morning, the water is very cold. Then the Slate women ask the question at the Brahmin, why are you are doing that? For me, uh, as a slave women, when I, I have to get up early uh, to wash the cloth, clothing, clothing. But for you, why you come here? Why you are diving into the water? When Brahmin said that, Whoever, whether young or old, does an evil action, even he is released from his evil action by a pollution in water. A pollution in water is a type of type of practice that uh, you think that by using water you can wash away all you are. So this Brahmin also the same, the same, the same thing. He believed that by diving into the Kanji River, all his evils, evil will be washed away, will be purified. So he is thinking in such a way, because of that, he is diving into the river. So here, so uh, Young lady, young lady, 
who is a slave in uh, Anatta Bhintika house. And he talked to the Brahmin. Who indeed told you this? Who told you this? Ignorant to the ignorance. Truly, he is released from his evil action by ablution water. Who told you that? He's blaming, she's blaming. And now she's talking that. Now, if by just diving into the river, all your evil deeds are washed away, washed away, if it is so, as she said, all frogs, tartes, will go to heaven. <laughs> Actually here, frogs and tartes, they live in the water. So they will not have any evil deed, any evil deed. They will go to heaven. And also alligators and crocodiles and other water dwellers will go to heaven because they are always living in the water. So they will not have any ibetit. Very logical, no? Very logical teaching. Then she said that if those streams, rivers, carry away for you the evil deed pre previously done, they will carry away your good deed as well. They will carry away your merit too. So yeah, it's very logical, logical teaching. If the water carry away all or the goodie, or the batit, or the frogs, crocodiles, fish. So they will go to heaven because uh, they are living in the water. And also, if if you think that water carry away all your evil deed, and also it will carry away your goodie as well. Thereby, you will be outside. So that means you will not have any goody or petty. Very logical one, no? Very logical one. So that means, even though they believe by diving in the water, all their petty will be washed away. If so, all your goody also will be washed away. So you will not have any goody or petty. Very interesting. Actually, this is a Onika Tirikata. It is a story of Onika, Onika slave women. Later, she became Bekuni, Bekuni. Then she, she became an Arahan, an Arahan. Then later, she talked about her life, her life. Then she shared our conversation with the Brahmin, with the Brahmin. So therefore, rites and rituals are important in every religion. In Buddhism also will be rites and rituals. So regarding with the rites and rituals in Jainism, uh, Jainism also do not believe the importance of rites and rituals. And Jain texts, Suya Katanga, Suya Katanga, uh, say some of the Brahmanic rituals. So actually, Jainism, Buddhism, trying to blame rites and rituals, especially the rites and rituals followed by Brahmins, followed by Hinduism, and also uh, Jainism also believe the real karma. But of course, there are some difference, some difference between Hinduism and Buddhism. 
So Jainism said that, uh, it's very interesting. If it were true that perfection can be attained by ablution, cleansing with the cold water. If perfection can be attained by evolution, then fish, fishes, protect, fish, protests, and snakes will attain the higher perfection. Similar, you know, similar teaching, similar teaching in Buddhism and Jainism. If water really wash away the evil deed, then it must wash away the goody also. Similar teaching, huh? similar teaching. The Brahmin is that perfection is to be attained by daily lighting out the fire. If this were truth, Smith, an artisan of a similar nature, will attain the higher sin sanctity. Sanctity. It's very beautiful. Very beautiful. Actually, in Brahmanism, even nowadays, they still believe that uh, if you tend the fire, then you will have a perfection. So you have a union with uh, Brahma, with the Brahma. So if this were truth, Smith and Artisan will have a higher perfection. So therefore, I think uh, Jainism also uh, do not pay attention to the rights and rituals. How about in Buddhism? How about in Buddhism? So regarding with the rights and rituals in Buddhism, I want to quote uh, uh, one of the lines from what the, Buddha, what the Buddhists believe. So this is a, one of the famous book written by Keshuri Dhammananda, Bhante Keshuri Dhammananda. And he said that, he said that, the rights and rituals are ornamentation or a decoration to purify a religion in order to attract the public. They provide a psychological help to some people. So we have a lot of rights and rituals, even in Buddhism and also in other religions. It helped them psychologically, psychologically. But one cannot one can practice religion without any rites and rituals, without following any rites and rituals. You can practice Buddhism. So therefore, when you look at um, when you look at uh, uh, the Nova Evil Path, the Nova Evil Path, there's no rights and virtues, no rights and virtues. So when you look at the important teachings of the Buddha, Dana Sila Bhavana, Dana Keeping Sila Moral Contact, Bhavana Meditation, so you will not see any rights and virtues. So you can practice Buddhism with any rights and rituals. So therefore, so according to Buddhism, of course, uh, people, so as a human nature, so they stay practice the rights and rituals, rights and rituals. But it is a uh, kind of ornamentation decoration in religion, in religion. But according to Buddhism, according to Buddhism, if you can practice teachings of the Buddha without relying on any rites and virtue, that will be the best. That will be the best. But uh, people still have attachment to rites and virtues. Stay okay, stay okay. But 
we must understand that. So we can practice Silas Maripanya or we can practice the Nova Ipo path without following rising wages. Okay. Question. Question. Uh, but then there's a question in the chat. So someone asked, yeah. uh, when transferring merits, uh, Buddhists pour water from a kettle into a cup until the water overflows. Is this considered a right in ritual? Uh, actually, it is, um, we cannot say it's a right in ritual. It is a sim symbol. I don't know how to say. It is a symbol. So you pour water until is overflow. It represents uh, water represent good deed, your good deed. Then flowing with the water is you are sharing your good deed to your departed relatives, departed relatives. It's not a rising religious, but without pouring water into the cap, you can still transfer the merit. So therefore, at the end of our lesson, we normally share the merit without using any water. The most important thing is you dedicate your goody to, to your departed relatives. So if they are around and they will know it and they will rejoice. So if they rejoice and they will, the life will transform. So therefore, um, pouring water into the cap is a type of symbol, symbol. So water represents your good deed. By doing good deed, you accumulate your good deed. Then you dedicate, you share your good deed to, uh, with your departed relative. It represents flowing water, flowing water. But you, you can still share the merit without using any water or any cap. Then just speak up. I share the merit with my departed relatives. Uh, Bhante, then based on this, what's the difference between a right and ritual and symbolism? So how do you define what is a right and ritual? Right and ritual, actually here is, um, uh, if you do not believe um, pleasant and unpleasant thing in our life, based on our karma, is a more camp. That is a uh, without rising reach. Suppose uh, you try hard in the schools because of that you got a degree. You got a degree from universities. You believe you are your actions, your own effect. You got a degree from university because of your own effect, because of your serious studies. That is, you believe cause and effect. But some people, they will go to one religious person, then they will, uh, uh, they will ask for help. Please, please, Praise for me to pass my, uh, to got a degree, to got a degree. Then uh, that the, the, uh, the religious person will use water, water and bless. So may you pass your exam, may you got degree without any difficulties. That the Pansi who believe what the religious Pansi say, do not study, just take a rest and also uh, 
uh, living in an easy life. Then after taking a sand, he or she will feel. He or she will feel. Because he doesn't believe his time, his actions. So he believes uh, not to say something magic for the religion. So that, that me, right and ritual me, uh, you rely on some something. It can be, it can be uh, being home to uh, one object. Or it can it can be um, keeping some object in your in your pocket like that. So you believe the power in it, but you do not rely on your own effect, your own. Um, you do not study your lesson well. So that is a rising religion. Any type of things that you believe outside of camp, outside of camp. And also uh, to make it more completely, something outside of the noble Ipopa. It can be called rising religious, rising religious. Likely uh, you make a lot of effort uh, to become a rich person. You try hard, that's your camp. That's your camp. Some people may go to uh, some places and they will pray, they will pray without making any effort. It can be rice and rituals because he do not, he or she do not believe uh, the result of camp. He want to be he or she want to become rich passing, but he didn't make inner effort. But just honestly rely on outside outside power. It can be the statue, it can be an object, it can be the place. So that is called rice and rich. It's very actually it's a very Right, uh, there are different types of rising religion. Even Buddhists, even Buddhists, we are following, we are using rising religions. Suppose in uh, a Buddhist temple, we'll be blessing with the water, right? Most of the, most of the uh, temples, they have a blessing with the water. Suppose you went to pass your ASAN, then you did not. You did not study, you have a strong faith in the blessing of the water. You think that by just receiving blessing from the Buddhist mind, you will pass a sign. You do not study, you didn't do anything, then you take a sign, you feel. So that is, it can be considered as a version of riches. But here, uh, of course, we use water, we bless. The reason is we have um, loving kindness and compassion. It is manifestation of loving kindness and compassion. People will come to temple, uh, they make sun effect, and also they have a uh, uh, they have a um, let's say when they visit uh, when they visit temple they will they will have a pure mind. So both the receiver and the person who bless, they have a loving compassion, good quality of the mind. Of course, such type of blessing way we have a same positive effect. So even the same act of blessing with the water, but if you believe, so this blessing will create a good karma in my ASAP. Then you didn't study, then that can be considered as a rational matrix. So it's very, very white, very white. So to make it very simple, so outside of all the practices, or all the 
all the custom and traditions that are outside of the Nuba Ipo part that can be called rites and rituals. But as a as a lay person, as a human being, so um, the belief in the rites and, rites and rituals will be you can stop only you become sort of a stream in Tara. So as long as we are not sort of Pana, we still believe in rising rituals, rising rituals. And uh, in Singapore, we have a uh, one famous statue. People believe that uh, people who come to who come to Singapore to get a job, they will go to that statues and they will pray, hoping that uh, not only the, the God uh, will help them to get a job. So that is also a type of rising rituals. People believe rising rituals. Um, so when they have a less confidence in their mind. Those who have full confidence in his professions and also skills in, in their respective uh, areas. So they will not rely on any, any external feeling or things. Then he will make his own effect to get a job. So let me. Uh, Honestly, study where and honestly, profession in his uh, respective areas, and also making uh, much effort to to get a suitable job for him or for her. That is a income. That's a income. So, if you are doing your own part the future will take care of itself. We don't need to worry. So therefore, um, as, a, as a, the human nature, so we, we normally believe by some rituals. So if you think that by visiting this place, you will be lucky, you will go very easy, you know, very easy. But quite natural, quite natural. And also there are some believe that if you visit um, three times, if you visit this place three times, you will be lucky. You will be, you will become rich, and you will become uh, famous and successful like that. Such belief can be called rising rituals. Nothing to do with, okay, nothing to do with um, how to stay. Uh, good luck. So good luck and also uh, success and also richness. Everything depends on your, your camera. Camera here is first camera, present camera. Uh, I think we actually have quite a few more questions. Uh, do you want to take them now or later? Uh, I think Later, huh? okay. I'll take it later. Yeah. I want, yeah, I want to continue uh, because uh, this is a um, connect each other. So here in Bodhisattva, the Buddha talk about impurity and purity. Impurity and purity in Chota Sota. This is a very beautiful Sota. Very beautiful Sota to know about purity in Buddhism and impurity in Buddhism. The Buddha said that. The Buddha talk about 10 unwholesome actions, like killing, stealing, etc. So we already talked about that. These chona are 10 causes of unwholesome karma, just like a killing, stealing, sexual misconduct, etc. If one engages in these 
10 courses or hours and camera. If you do hours and camera, then if one tins the secret file, one is impure. And if one doesn't in the secret file, one is impure, impure. Right. Of course, in actually, telling the secret file is the practice done by uh, Brahmin or Hinduism. So they believe that by tending the secret file, and um, so their sin will be purified, purified. Here, the Buddha said that after doing 10 courses of Aung San Gama, even though you tend the fire or you do not tend the fire, you are impure. Some people will pay homage to the sand, hoping that all their sin will be purified. And uh, if you do Aung San Gama, even though you pay homage to the sand, you are stay impure. If you do not pay homage to the sand, also you are stay impure because you do our sentiment. Similarly, if after doing our sentiment, even though you immerse yourself in water three times a day. You are stay impure because the Buddha said, for what reason? The Buddha said, because these 10 causes of Ahus and Kama are then say impure and defiant. So that means after doing Ahus and Kama, you are impure. Even though you practice different type of rising rituals, you stay in pure. It is because people engage in these 10 causes of our karma that hell, the animal realm, the sphere of afflicted spirit, and other bad destination see. Because of those hours and karma, they go to happy destinations. The here, the purity in Buddhism, purity in Buddhism. The Buddha said that if one engages in 10 courses of Hosan and Karma, if one do Hosan and Karma, whether or not he perform rites and rituals, one is pure. Because he, it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, how do you say, Nothing to do with rice and rituals. So if you do whole sandy, you are still pure. You are still pure. Because these 10 causes of whole and karma, so here 10 causes of whole and karma mean you abstain from killing, stealing, engaging in sexual misconduct, etc. etc. So, so you will be pure. Because these holes and karma are things say pure and purifying, pure and purifying. It is because of that people go to heaven, people become devas, people become human beings, and they go to the good destinations. So here we can we can uh, study that purity and impurity in policy. So in Buddhism, we have a three type of purity. So number one, bodily purity, abstinence from distraction or life. So if you refrain from killing, you are pure. If you abstain from stealing, you are pure. If you abstain from sexual misconduct, you are pure. Finally, four type of purity. If you abstain from telling lie, if you abstain from divisive speeches, if you abstain from hard speech and idle chatter, 
then you are pure. And also we have three types of mental purity, abstaining from longing, abstaining from envy, and abstaining from wrong view. You are pure. So that means purity, impurity depends on your camp. If you do an old same camera, you are impure. Even though you follow a lot of rights and rituals, eternally pure. So if you do, uh, after doing whole sang karma, the good deed will be pure. Even though you are doing rights and rituals, stay pure, stay pure. So therefore, uh, the purity of the mind, the purity of the body, the purity of the speech depends on our good deed. Okay, so there's the important uh, teachings about karma and the set of karma. So if we understand, so we were not relying on outside people, outside things. So we were not relying on rights and virtues. We just pay attention to our karma, just to good it. Okay, uh, now we can answer the question. Uh, so one of the questions was, uh, is there a difference between uh, sharing merits or transferring merits? Sharing merit and transferring of the merit. Uh, of course, this is a uh, uh, discussion. We cannot transfer merit. We cannot transfer merit. So some people want to use Dedication of merit, dedication of merit. We dedicate our good deed to our departed relatives. So some scholars are very careful about using the language. So they say that we cannot transfer our merit. So we just dedicate and we just speak out that I have done a good deed today and I share that good deed with my departed relatives. Only our departed relatives, after seeing, after hearing, rejoice, feel very happy. Then only he or she will get it. Even though we share our good deed, if they do not rejoice, they will not get it. They will not get it. So therefore, uh, some scholar, they don't want to use the word transparent or the merit. But of course, I think uh, we, shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't too serious about the language. So actually we are using metaphorically, metaphorically. So we share, share and dedicate our put it. Then if our departed relatives after seeing, after hearing, they rejoice, they will get it. They will get it. They will receive it. Share our good deed. In that way, it is look like we transfer our good deed to our departed relatives. Normally, normally, after doing good deed, then we, we will have that good deed. So we just dedicate our good deed to our departed relatives. So our good deed will not be, we are not transparent our good deed. We just share, we just share. Normally we, uh, we give the simile of candlelight, simile of candlelight in the room. Darkness, no light, and we light the candle, one candle. Now there's the light. Another person want to uh, want to light his candy. Now, of course, we will let let him light the candy. Two candy, and also other people all the way come get the light, more candy light. So here, our candy light is not decreasing. Even the light in the room is 
bright in, brighter and brighter. So similarly, after doing good deed, we accumulate that good deed. Even though we transfer, we you, even though we share or transfer, we are not sharing our good deed. Actually, we our good deed stay stay here, our good deed. So we just dedicate. We just dedicate. Then if they rejoice and happy, and they will get uh to see the result of good deed. Suppose. Suppose, <clears throat> suppose you are saying, uh, got a first prize in his school. He's very happy, very happy. So he got a first prize. Then he come back, he come back home and share the new with his mother. The mother, also be very happy. So that means sharing of having a, the first prize. So he has the first prize already. So he share a piece of good news with his mom. His mother also became very happy, rejoice. You know, that's a good deed. Good deed. Similarly, we accumulate a type of good deed we stay happy, we dedicate. If, whether our departed relatives or anyone rejoice our good deed, they will get good deed. So that is the nature of. So that means uh, some people do not want to use the word transparent or the merit. So they say that they cannot, we cannot transpire. Of course, if we take it, the language, the word seriously, they are right. But for me, okay, okay, we can use any language, met metaphor, it's metaphor. Okay, any question? Mante, can I interrupt? Sorry, yes. just what you say when you delegate to the departed and then they must rejoice before they can receive the merits, right? So yeah. how would we know whether they have received and then whether they really rejoice or don't rejoice from that? Even though we are delicate to uh, those that are not departed, uh, we I mean we don't go and tell them say that, oh we del I delicate the merits to you. So how would they know that we we delicate the merits to them and how would they rejoice from from this? Of course, if we see divine eye, we will, <laughs> we will know it because we do not have any divine eye. We cannot see, but uh, some people, some people the. Uh, uh, so of course there are some some personal stories. So even uh, the monastery I stay in Mandalay, uh, the Tuna, the Tuna is uh, the uh, the person who converted to Buddhism from Islam, Islam, because he, he got his daughter time early. And the daughter normally come to his dream, telling him that he do not have any clothes, any food, any shelter. And he trying to do equity in Islam, but still coming to his dream. And also he do, uh, uh, according to other religion, Finally, he came to Buddhism. One of his friends, Buddhist friend, told him to offer food, to offer robes, to offer, to offer robes to the Sangha, then to share the merit. Then he followed. He offered food and the rope. So that night, his daughter told him, I got clothing and food, but I do not have a shelter. So therefore, he uh, he decided to uh, offer monasteries, monasteries, and he told his family, "When I want to become a Buddhist, 
So whether you want to become a Buddhist or not, it's up to you. So for me, I in way become a Buddhist. That he offer in monasteries. So actually, it's a very big monastery, even nowadays still existing. So that is monastery I stay in Mandalay. So uh, after uh, donating monastery, he shared the merit that he was informed of. So her daughter received. So whether I don't know whether it's true or not, because it is a based on the dream, based on the dream. So we do not know. But if if his dream is a right, we can say that they say she uh, her daughter, his daughter received sharing of the mind. Of course, if you are a divine eye, you will you will know it. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Bhante. Uh, maybe I read the next question. Yeah. Next question is uh, why do some uh, monasteries and centers uh, chant suttas in Pali where most people or recite, uh, reciters may not understand? So, is this a form of rites and rituals too? Chanting, if you believe that, if you believe that by listening that chanting, all you are saying, or you are even actually will be wiped away. If you are chanting, if you're listening in, in that way, it can be rise and rituals. But the purpose of chanting is normally we chant the quality of the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha, and also the discourses on loving kindness. Uh, of course, nowadays, nowadays, people, uh, we normally use Pali as a medium of our chanting. Uh, as a monastics, of course, we know the Pali that we are chanting. But as a lay person, if you trying to, uh, if you are, if you understand. Uh, what we are chanting, that will be more beneficial, more beneficial. But sometimes uh, you can use chanting as a, a type of uh, tranquilizing your mind, tranquilizing your mind. So, of course, the purpose of chanting is to recollect the quality of Buddha Dhamma Sangha. And also uh, the teachings of the Buddha, just like a loving kindness. So Karaniya Metasoda that we chant is talk about loving kindness. So without knowing the meaning of uh, Karaniya Metasoda, of course you will have uh, some type of benefit, but you will not have uh, 100%. If you know the meaning, then you contemplate and you analyze and you apply teachings of the Buddha in your daily life. That will be more meaningful. But of course, um, chanting in Pali without knowing the meaning, it may be if you have a wrong understanding. It may be uh, a type of rising wages, type of rising wages. Then I will give you one example. In uh, with, uh, when somebody time, we normally go there and chant in Pali. Pali. Actually, when you look at those chantings, when you look at the translation of those chanting, you will know that. So we are contemplating the nature of this body. We were trying to want it. We were trying to want it. The nature of empowerment. Of course, as a lay person, you will not understand. You will not understand. Of course, 
should try to understand. So the best way is using the mother language, mother language. If you are Chinese, if you can chant in Chinese, that will be better. If you are English spoken, if you are speaking in English, chanting in English will be much better. Actually, the Buddha said, the Buddha, uh, as uh, the Buddha idea is, um, as long as, um, as long as um, we can use any language, as long as it, it can carry the original teachings, original teachings. So it, maybe next week I will, I will use, I will use one sutta to talk about that. Uh, it's maybe it's a little bit uh, so that you will know the purpose of chanting. It's also connected with the camp. It's a theory of camp. Some people believe that by just listening to uh, chanting, and they will go to heaven like that. No, it's not like that. So maybe I, I will call beautiful soda for that. So that me, of course, if you use um, local language, Chinese or English, or your own mother language, that will be the best. But of course, it might be soothing. While you are chanting, you should know the meaning. Then after knowing the meaning, you apply teachings of the Buddha in your daily life. That will be the purpose of chanting. Okay. The last question. Uh, there's a question, Bhante. Can you elaborate more on how pouring water from a kettle into a cup until it overflows is useful for transference of merits? Some time to cultivate positive mind. We need an object. So I don't know whether you have seen the beat, you know? So we, we are using the beat. So let me, uh, when we are chanting, so we use the beat to focus our mind in the beat, you know? We call. Similarly, we use a uh, cap, a uh, kete and we pour water into the cup so that we concentrate on uh, what we are doing, sharing all the merit. Actually, some people may concentrate on just pouring water. It's not, it's not right, it's not right. You can pour water at the same time, you dedicate your good deed to your departed relatives. That's the main thing. As I earlier said that, we can share the merit without using any cutters or anything. So this is a uh, traditional, uh, traditional I will, uh, practice. Follow at the time of the Buddha. At the time of the Buddha, King Bimbisa, you know? King Bimbisa. He poured the water on the ground. Not on the cap, not on the cap, on the crown. So that me, uh, the Bora, uh, the Bora, so Kim uh, Sara pour the water into the hands of the Bora. So he, uh, he donate a piece of land to the Bora so that uh, the Bora can use as a monasteries, Wiluwana monasteries. So that me, uh, Kim Bambi Sara use the water, water. So we follow that tradition. So later we pour the water into the cup. Then we pour the, that water on the ground, on the ground. That means we can do two way. If you are doing Sherry Mary on the ground, you can pour on the ground dryly. But if you are sharing merit uh, in the room, 
you cannot pull on, on, the, on the ground, you know, on the floor. Then you have to use the cap. So maybe we can say it's a later development. Later development. So, um, as I earlier said that the most important thing is you share equity. You dedicate your equity with your relatives. To rejoice, they will catch you on the merit. Okay, so I think uh, time is set. Maybe we uh, continue next week, we'll focus on VIPA.